Well, hello, Cinnamon Bun. Welcome back to another belated My Journal, My Journal and Me. Um, is she going to say it? Yes, it's been a while. Um, hi. Hello. Um, so, I'm still recovering in the long, boring tail end of COVID. Um, so, just going to set up my journal for the month and uh, chat to you a bit about what's been going on. Okay. There will be sniffling throughout this video because me and my nose are having a little cold war. But I'll do my best to edit it out. Uh, and because of my nose, I'm also not going to burn any incense uh, and do my normal ritual. I'm just going to use this little rollerball instead. Okay, you know what? I don't normally do this, and I might cut this out, <laughs> I might change my mind, but I want to talk you through how I'm deciding what image to put. Uh, because a lot of the time, or some of the time, it is just like something that's related to the season and that I like the look of, but this has a bit more meaning uh, than usual. So I am setting up my journal pretty late this cycle. Um, I would normally be doing this on like day three, four, five, and because I've been sick still, it is day 10 uh, as I'm setting this up. So I already feel kind of behind, but it also means that I have clarified my kind of like intention for the month, which I kind of think of as like an overarching theme or a feeling that I'm trying to work towards and that will hopefully work as like, which will hopefully work as like a filter to help me decide what the, what the specific like practical projects and tasks and stuff and activities are that I'm going to do. And I'm trying this new thing. Uh, it was a kind of an idea from Maisie Hill's, is that her name? Maisie Hill? The Period Power podcast um, about setting an intention using just like one word. And I have broken it already because I'm using two words, but like thinking about how you want to feel and almost like being a verb and like this kind of filter to make decisions through. Like, is it gonna, is X activity, task, project gonna bring me closer to that intention? And my intention for this cycle is wise progress or wise progression. And I clarified that through doing some tarot and stuff um, because I realized that like, I have been sick for like over 30 days now, this last period of illness and before that, kind of like for about three quarters of this year so far, I've been sick. So I've been feeling really stuck and like trapped and not able to do the things that I want to do and like stagnant. And so what I want and need more than anything is like a sense of moving forward and a sense of progress of like actually being able to start getting things done. But I also wanted to temper that. It was actually the snake Lenormand card. So I've qualified it with wise progress. And I hope that that hopefully is a sensible way to do it because it's, I'm thinking about, okay, how can I progress, but in a measured, sensible, wise kind of way so that I don't like overload myself and um, make myself feel worse. So like what are small pieces of progress that I can make with my current capacity of <laughs> energy physically and mentally and emotionally, which is pretty fucking low right now, to be honest. So so that's why I was thinking owls, because they are a symbol of a guide that I work with, but also obviously 
symbolize wisdom. So I was thinking, okay, wise progress, maybe I'll pick an owl. But then I also came across this and I have this image because it's got magpie in it and magpie, one of the guides I work with as a witch has a, is a magpie has a magpie form, I guess, and I associate that guide with uh, the kind of realm of the mind and mental health and spirituality and stuff, and I actually have a different guide that I associate with the domain of the body, with corporalis, with body and physical health and stuff, and they have an not quite as strong an association, but an association with the deer. And so I thought, oh, this maybe makes perfect sense because it's like about a kind of finding a balance between the two. Because I think <sighs> I have been trying to take care of my body for the last 30 days or longer. And so I haven't been exercising. I've been trying to rest. I've been trying to like just feed myself and like recover physically but that has taken a real toll on my mental health because I haven't been able to do things that are interesting and that engage my brain, I haven't been able to exercise and that always has like a really detrimental effect on my mental health and all these other things. So I'm kind of thinking about how I can focus more on taking care of my mind. Anyway, I've been, yeah, I've been thinking about that balance between how can I take care of my body and my mind when it seems like they're in conflict <laughs> right now. So that's the thought process behind this. I also just think this is a beautiful photo, like it's obviously like golden hour and stuff and I think, and I think I will probably get, the next time I order free prints I'll probably order this one again. I think it also works for late spring, right, because it's got that kind of like, that bright golden sunlight kind of vibe, it feels like spring. So hi, hello, voiceover Rachel is back. Um, so yeah, the quick, the quick update is um, it's not technically long COVID yet, I think it has to be three months for that, but um, a long, slow recovery. Um, but I have managed to kind of like take back some pieces of normality here and there. Um, basically, it seems to follow like a, a pretty, it's been a pretty consistent like cycle um, these past few weeks of I wake up feeling like absolute crap in the morning. Um, like really congested and headachey and cough and nose and all of that and then um, as the day goes on it starts to clear up and then kind of in the middle of the day for at least a few hours I tend to feel almost normal like almost normal um, and then as the evening wears on then I start to feel bad again <laughs> and that seems to be what the the deal is for now so I'm trying to just work with that take things slow in the morning and then try and get on with my day um, and just do the same kind of things that I would normally do but just like a bit less of them because I have a shorter window each day than I did before. So um, yeah I'm getting bloods done with the doctor so they can see if there's anything else going on and she encouraged me to get back to some kind of gentle exercise and I was like well actually I was thinking of going back to boxing today for the first time in ages and she was like mm -hmm, okay maybe calm down a little bit um, and I went anyway so <laughs> I just listen um, yeah it helps my head and it I think I did fine it was fine um, I feel like as a 30 year old woman now who has been doing some kind of martial arts or boxing on and off since I was 17 I have learned to pace myself and so I'm not one of those people that will push myself way too hard if my body can't handle it like I I pay attention <laughs> to how I feel when I'm exercising um so yeah that's that's the update um yeah my chat otherwise um like yeah more more of life just in smaller increments I guess um one fun thing that I did get to do recently is that I went to a nad pod uh live show um so that's not another D&D &D podcast which is a D and D podcast, funnily enough, um, that I listen to, um, and me and a friend and my little brother went to their live show, and it was really good. I've never been to like a D and D live show before, and I've always wanted to, um, and it was just hijinks. It was just ridiculous and good fun, and a little bit surreal. Um, so that's cool. I did get a T-shirt. <laughs> um, and yeah, just like nice to like do something a little bit different. Um, 
never thought I'd see someone try to romance Elrond, um, but that is what happened. Uh, yeah, so that was good. Um, otherwise, oh boy. Um, so I've been thinking. I've been thinking a lot about. I mean, this will surprise no one. I've been thinking a lot about creativity and creative practice and what it means for me to have a sustainable creative practice and how that fits in with my business and what parts of it are the business and how do I keep parts of it just for me and how do I find a rhythm that works without like overloading and hyper focusing and then abandoning things and um, so I still haven't figured out the details exactly but I think I am ready to say that I have been working on a project uh, concerning the constellation system um, which you might have seen in these videos if you've watched them before um, which is my kind of like magic system for organizing my life and um, so I'm working on a project to do with that I won't get into the specifics of what format it's taking right now um, but that's been really exciting and I felt really just like fizzy and hyped about it um, and the main frustration to be honest has just been like not having the energy that I would normally have to like just pour myself into it um, but even without that I've still kind of been pouring myself into it um, so yeah I've just been kind of engrossed in um, writing for that and like design for that um, it's like a different kind of medium than I've worked in before and so it's like a new it feels like a new adventure to figure out how to make this thing that I've never made before um, and so I've actually really been enjoying doing research for that as well which is a concept to me um, for like non-fiction stuff is like specifically seeking out books um, so I'm reading a couple of books uh, that are related to things on, on that um, and I'm listening to an audiobook um, about one specific topic that I'm really enjoying and it's just kind of blowing my mind and I'm, I feel like things are slotting into place. Um, so that's cool. And it has had me thinking again like about what does it mean for me to have sustainable loops of creativity. So I will leave you with some jazz for a moment and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so now I have, now I've laid out my spread, I've filled in my usual lunar list, I have added any big events for the month, I've got my intention, now it's time to decide what my projects and quests are going to be. And actually, me and Christy have already planned out what our tasks are for the business this month already. We did that the other day, so I already know what those are, so I'm just going to write those in. They're on Notion.
so like I said, I've been thinking a lot about sustainable loops for work, rest, creativity, productivity, all of that. Um, which is something I think about a lot because, you know, I work for myself and it has its pros and cons. But one of the things that's a pro most of the time is that I set my own schedule. And, you know, most people have their relationship with, like, labour and rest <laughs> kind of dictated by uh time and by uh like parameters that other people set for them whether that's a job or family or like other societal things um you know there are these like collective structures of time and like work and rest that a lot of people are forced to kind of live by and i think a lot of those obviously don't prioritize rest enough in that like you know so many people are um overworked or burned out um and so one of the pros of working for myself is that I get to kind of dictate what's my rhythm for work and the everything else. And um, in some ways that's really overwhelming because it's like, oh God, I could do anything. Where do I even start? Um, but obviously I've been kind of thinking about this for years. So um, yeah, it's been interesting to have like some of that kind of clarified and realizing actually as well that like um, I've always tried to figure out like what's the relationship between my creative work and my monetized work. So like Genero and Davice is my name, my names for those domains, like creativity and money. And um, realizing that things start out as Genero, right? Because um, I just want to make things and uh, I want to keep it kind of for myself when I'm making it. And then there's like a stage later on in the kind of creative cycle that it kind of switches. And it's like, once I've completed it or come close to, um, then I kind of like think about well do I want to monetize this and then it kind of transitions into Davice um, but sometimes it might not you know sometimes I do just want to keep it for myself so yeah that's been kind of interesting to realize <laughs> This is my final spread. Because I have like distilled my intention slash focus of the month down to just two words, I've obviously got more space here, so I don't know. I might like write some more about this or use a doodle or I don't know, I'll stick something there. Or I'll just leave it blank, who cares? Um, then I've got my month, then I've got my leader list, and then I've got my main quests and projects, like the stuff I actually need to get done or that it's high priority and then I've got side quests so that's like uh, ideas for other things I can do or want to do uh, at some point but are not like super vital so it's basically bonus and actually for this I decided to not even put like task bullets next to them uh, because I feel like that implies that I'm meant to be trying to check them all off um, so actually if I do any of these I'll just put an x next to it to mark that I've done it but these aren't technically tasks, they're like options. So uh, I think that's gonna work a little bit better. But yeah, that's my spread. Um, and then I'll just be starting my next daily log on this next page. And thus, we have arrived at the end of the video. I hope you had a good time. Um, if you liked it, do do all the normal YouTube things that YouTube likes. Um, like, subscribe, leave a comment, why not? Um, otherwise, uh, do I have anything? I don't have anything super time sensitive to let you know about at the moment. Um, just I will say, um, if you if you like my work, if you're interested in this constellation system project that I'm talking about or you just want to know when I have new things out or new videos or whatever, um, do sign up for my newsletter. Um, I have been getting really into the idea of my newsletter becoming like the main like way that I get to um, talk about cool things that are going on. Um, so if you want to be part of that, do sign up. Um, I will have the thing on the screen. I can't remember the link right now, but it's on the screen, I promise. Um, and yeah, at the moment, I don't have a fixed schedule for how many newsletters I do. Um, 
but I'm going to be creating one soon and I'm trying to figure out like what's actually going to be sustainable um, because I <clears throat> sorry I would like to do it more regularly um, but at the moment it's just like basically whenever I have a new video or a new offering so no more than every two weeks um, so it's quite infrequent but it's good we have a little bit of chat I share some things that I've found interesting or that have got me thinking recently um, do a little almanac update where we are in the various cycles and uh, yeah just share good stuff so um, do sign up for that um, the other thing is oh I have a patreon um, as you can probably tell from these credits <laughs> we do a monthly live stream um, and we have done one on the constellation system and many other things um, I've had to cancel the last couple unfortunately because I've been ill but I'm hoping to get back to that next month um, but we do have a nice big backlog of all the previous clubhouse live streams where I've talked about all sorts of stuff so you can dig into that in the meantime um, and I also do have like a little uh, video that I did specially for my patrons uh, about my weekly spread uh, that I had been using for a while so maybe that's of interest okay um, that's it from me I uh, hope you're doing okay and I hope you're taking care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Bye.